Hello, PaleoFX Tribe. Keith Norris here. I'm back again. You got to see my pretty mug just a little bit ago with uh, Dr. Dan Papa. Now I am with another beautiful person, Dr. Tom O'Brien. Dr. Tom, how you doing, brother? Oh, really well, thank you. Really well. It's, I uh, know it's you are. <laughs> Tom just uh, gave me a quick tour of where he is suffering in quarantine in Costa Rica right now. So everybody send your your most uh, your your best vibes to Dr. Tom. He is just really suffering right now, hanging out. In Costa Rica. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks. Keith. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful place to be. Beautiful place to be. Um, some of you know, some of you may not know that I most recently interviewed uh, Dr. Tom O'Brien for the Keto FX event that we did. Um, the Keto FX event, you can, we'll drop a link in here too. Melissa, if you're listening, if you could drop a link for that, uh, preferably Dr. Tom's link, that would be cool. If you're listening, if not, we can drop that in after the fact. Um, but Dr. Tom, on top of that being just an, an incredible interview, very, very insightful on uh, your thoughts on the keto diet, um, but you provided information of a study that you were trying to uh, um, trying to get together at that time. Maybe if you could talk briefly about your thoughts on the keto diet and what this study is about. You bet. Uh, thanks. And it was as a result of our talking before the Keto Summit interview that I said, hey, let's do a study. And so we put it together and we're launching it, we're announcing it now to launch. Um, the keto diet, there's really no question of its potential value. There are many, many studies that talk about enhancing brain function and case studies of people with cognitive decline really bad that went on a ketogenic diet and all of a sudden the lights get brighter and their brain's working better. No question, kids, with uh, recurrent seizures and the medications don't work. Some of them, they just do really well on a ketogenic diet because the ketogenic diet gets a different type of fuel into the brain. And as opposed to glucose, which we all depend on, and it's our normal fuel for the brain and the most common fuel for the brain. When you do a ketogenic diet, you turn on fat as the fuel for the brain. And there's no question of the value of it, but for some people, it can be a problem. And the purpose of the study is to see, are you currently, is your body, not you, but your body receptive to doing a ketogenic diet right now so that long-term you get benefits? And it's important to understand the long-term concept as opposed to, well, I get on a ketogenic diet and I feel good. I feel good. I lose some weight. I feel good. Well, that doesn't mean that you aren't frying your brain. Right. And, right. and which is what we're going to talk about here. So I have to do a little geek stuff about, you know, what happens for some people. There's a condition that most people have never heard of, but many people have experienced in a loved one or a neighbor uh, or a friend. And that is called sepsis. Sepsis um, is the number two killer, I believe, I'm not sure if it's two or three, uh, of uh, elders that die in the hospital. They die of sepsis. Well, they had pneumonia. Well, the pneumonia was caused by the sepsis. Right. And, and in COVID right now, sepsis is the reason why these people are dying. It's, it's the, all of the fluid that accumulates in the lungs. And where is that fluid coming from? It's because the lungs for these people and for those in the hospital that die of sepsis, the lungs are loaded with this stuff that's called endotoxin that have been accumulating in minor amounts over the years. And endotoxin, another word for it is LPS or lipopolysaccharide. It's the exhaust of gram-negative bacteria. And we all have gram-negative bacteria in our gut that's not supposed to be there. You know, a little bit because it's in the environment, good. But um, um, our immune system is supposed to grab it, lock it up, and escort it out in the bowel movement so it never gets in the body. Now, Professor Alessio Fasano, the guy who identified intestinal permeability back in 1997, and has devoted his career to this, 
He's the chair of pediatric gastroenterology at Harvard, at Mass General at Harvard, and he is the head of the Department of Mucosal Immunology. That means the lining of your gut and the lining of your lungs and the lining of your throat. That's the mucosa. He chairs all of that. All the professors work under him. He's been talking now for over 20 years that there's two things that will cause leaky gut or intestinal permeability every time. Two things, they're the primary triggers. There's more that can cause leaky gut, but the primary triggers are LPS, this lipopolysaccharide from gram-negative bacteria. So if your immune system hasn't grabbed it and locked it up when it first got in with the food or the beverage that you're drinking, and your immune system is supposed to grab it, and that's called secretory IgA in your gut that's supposed to grab it, and in your mouth, actually, in the mouth and down in the gut. Grab it and escort it out in the stool. And if it can't do it or if it doesn't do it because you're being exposed to too much or you have a secretory IgA deficiency, this stuff hangs out in the gut. And if it hangs out in the gut, it causes intestinal permeability, leaky gut. That's one of the two things. And the other thing is gluten. Every person, every time they eat wheat, they get leaky gut, every time. But it's called transient, meaning the Mrs. Patient, every cell in your body regenerates, every single cell except your teeth, every cell. Some cells are really quick, like the lining of the guts every two, three days. Um, your bones are cell, bones, bone cells are slow, but they regenerate. Every brain cells regenerate, every cell regenerates. But when you eat wheat, you tear the lining of the gut every person, every time, but then it heals, fastest growing cells inside lining of the gut. And you eat it again, it tears, but it heals. And so you don't feel when any of this is happening, but that's what Professor Fasano taught us is that every person, every time, gets this transient tear. And but when you cross the line of tolerance, meaning the loss of what's called oral tolerance, now you don't heal anymore. Now you got the leaky gut. And the leaky gut is the gateway into the development of autoimmune diseases, whether it's MS or rheumatoid or psoriasis or you know whatever, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. It's the leaky gut that's the gateway into all of that inflammation that can occur anywhere in the body. So why am I telling you all this background stuff? Because one of the molecules that gets in through the leaky gut, if you've lost tolerance, is LPS. And when it gets in, they find it in lymph nodes. They find it in your liver. They find it in your spleen. They find it in your lungs. They find it in your brain. That in the brain, if for people that pass from Alzheimer's and they do autopsy and they look at that beta amyloid plaque, it's loaded with antibodies to LPS. Mm meaning LPS got into the brain. And then your immune system makes these antibodies to try and fight it. And that's all part of what causes the plaque that is the recognizable um, sign of Alzheimer's. So all of that background, all of that background means that so many people, and in our practice, it's somewhere between 20 to 25% of everybody we test has elevated antibodies to LPS, meaning this stuff's in your body and you can't tell, but your immune system's trying to fight it. But if this stuff gets in your thyroid, you develop thyroid autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. If it gets into your brain, you get cognitive decline, killing off brain cells that eventually manifest as dementia. If it gets into your lungs, you get pneumonia or bronchitis. Mm. If it gets in your ears, you get ear infections, otitis, the ear. It doesn't matter. It, it goes everywhere. It's in the blood. It can deposit anywhere. So people that have elevated LPS antibodies in their bloodstream right now, and we find that 20 to 25 percent of people have elevated LPS in their bloodstream, that means that the gateway for these big molecules to get in has been opened up already for a long time. Mm -hmm. And these molecules got in there. Okay, what's the problem with that? Your immune system's fighting that, and that can be the trigger for the inflammation that you're feeling. 
that's manifesting and plugging up your pipes with coronary artery disease or affecting your ears, you get recurrent ear infections or affecting your sinuses, you get recurrent sinus infections. It, right. it goes into any tissue and then your immune system trying to protect you is trying to fight that, creating the inflammation. Okay, why am I telling you all that? What's LPS, if the gateway is open and this stuff's getting in, it accumulates, it accumulates, it accumulates over decades. And you don't feel except maybe, oh, you know, I get a little winded when I walk up the stairs. You can't tell that you've got 15, 20 years of accumulated LPS in your lungs. Right. But your lungs aren't working as well anymore. Or your muscles aren't working as well anymore. Yeah, I used to be a fast runner and I'm not, you know, there are so many things that can contribute to physical performance. But this is one of them, right? This is one of them. And can, and can this elevated LPS be tested for in a normal blood test? Absolutely. Easy. No brainer. Easy. Mm -hmm. But doctors don't think about this. And the reason I'm telling you all that is that this mechanism of years and years of this LPS coming in through the leaky gut, there are six ways that it can get in, but the most common way is the leaky gut. Years and years of this LPS getting in and accumulating in your bloodstream eventually manifests as sepsis. 1.7 million people a year in the U.S. get sepsis, of which 250,000 of them die every year. Every year, 250,000, a quarter of a million people every year. But no one tests for this. And when people are at the end stage of life, they, they will reference in the death certificate sometimes uh, endotoxin. They'll say pneumonia. And rarely, but a really good doc will say due to endotoxin, mm -hmm. meaning a whole lot of this crud that's accumulated in your lungs over the years, or Alzheimer's uh, with concomitant accumulated endotoxin. Mm -hmm. You don't see that very often because most docs aren't that thorough in the records to talk about where things come from. Right. But it's the primary contributor to what kills 250,000 people every year. Why do you think this has been so overlooked for so long? It's not, there's no drug that can stop ah. the accumulation <laughs> of endotoxin. There's no profit. <laughs> there's no profit in that. You know, right. but if, if, if you go to Google and type in endotoxin, you see hundreds of studies on this. And the primary contributor to it is a leaky gut. That's how just over the years, it keeps coming in, coming in, coming in. My mother died of sepsis. And so, you know, I'm sensitive to this one. Right. I know this one really well now. Right. I made sure to understand this one. Now, why am I telling you all this? And why did I get turned on to talking about this with you uh, for the Keto Summit? It's because the primary way that LPS gets into the bloodstream is not from leaky gut. That's the secondary way. The primary way that it gets in, now this is a geek term, lipid raft transcytosis. Now, what does that mean? Lipid, fats, lipids are fats. Lipid raft, like a boat, transcytosis, piggyback, right through the cell. So LPS piggybacks on top of fat molecules from the food that you eat, and we absorb our fats right through the cell. It's called transcytosis. Mm -hmm. So LPS piggybacks on the back of fat molecules and es gets escorted right into the bloodstream. So it's a perfect Trojan horse. Exactly, that's right. a really good term for it. Really good term, the, the Trojan horse in a keto diet. Right. And it's, it ain't good. So if you've already got elevated levels of LPS in your bloodstream and LPS antibodies, meaning the immune system's trying to fight it. If they're elevated, you got a problem and you go on a ketogenic diet eating much more fat, then you get not only possibly what they call the keto flu. Oh, really? Yeah, you're just detox. No, no, no. You're flooding more of this toxic crud into the system. And your body has to rally to try to get you back to some stage of normal, but you keep flooding it into the system and this stuff accumulates 
in your brain, in your thyroid, in your liver, in your kidneys, your gallbladder, throughout your body. And 10 years, 20 years from now, you know, you, you, you got a little healthier, you know, you lost a little weight and you, you had like a decade of razzmatazz, you know, you can be built like Adonis or, you know, have the Baywatch babe look, you know, and all, and you felt great and successful. But now 10 years later, your brain's not working so well anymore, right? Because this stuff has been accumulating. So for me, it's critically important when people want to do a ketogenic diet, which has lots of benefits, they just check to see, do I have elevated LPS in my bloodstream right now? Because if you do, you're going to accelerate the rate of right. deterioration and inflammation in your body that you might, may not feel for a decade while it's killing off brain cells, killing off brain cells, right. killing off brain cells. So this is a really smart move to just check because if you've got elevated LPS, you absolutely do not increase your fat intake until you clean up this elevated LPS problem. Right. And when you clean it up and you recheck and now you're down to normal rate, great, go for it, have fun. You know, get the Baywatch look, you know, if you want, which is great, you know, uh, but you're not putting your future health at risk. So this is not to say people cannot do the keto diet, the ketogenic diet. This is to say, if you have elevated antibodies, give me 90 days where you apply a protocol to clean up this crap, excuse me, clean this stuff up that's in your body that triggers so much inflammation and then recheck and make sure you were successful and then green light, go for it, have fun with it, you know, see how beneficial it can be for you. And why would someone have elevated LPS? What's the underlying mechanism that would tend somebody towards having this condition? Every person, every time they eat wheat, gets tears in the inside lining of their gut. Uh, it's called intestinal permeability. Every person, every time. And with the current testing, which is so much more sophisticated than ever before, when we check people, nine, eight and a half to nine out of 10 people have a problem with wheat and your immune system's fighting wheat. Mm -hmm. Now you may say, oh, I feel good when I eat a sandwich. I'm great. That, that means your GI tract is fine. But you know what? That history of kidney stones that you had last year or your recurrent joint pain on your knee or, right. you know, that ringing in your ears or, you, you know, that irregular heartbeat or, you know, your thyroid that's not working so well in the blood test. I mean, just Google gluten and thyroid, gluten and heart rates, gluten and congestive heart failure, gluten and brain fog, gluten and seizures. I mean, there are 23,000 studies of the problem with wheat. But we think, well, I feel good when I eat it. Well, then that's okay. But you have other health concerns. Right. So that's why we're doing this study is so people can find out. And what are they going to find out? There is a blood test available now by finger prick, which is so cool. You don't have to go to the doctor's office and get a needle in your arm to draw blood. Mayo Clinic just published on this finger prick test that it is 98% accurate every single time, which is unbelievable, really quite unbelievable. The paper is, uh, the pre-publication uh, just came out um, uh, earlier this week. Yeah, today's Friday. Yeah, earlier this week, it just came out. Why? Because the paper was talking about um, SARS-CoV-2, and there's a finger prick test for SARS-CoV-2. But this technology is the exact same technology for the test for wheat sensitivity and LPS and intestinal permeability. It's the same, same technology. And Mayo Clinic has published on that technology in the past. But now they published on the finger prick to say this is right on the money, startlingly easy. And many, many more people would be eligible to get this test done because you don't have to drive anywhere. You know, we just mail you a card. You prick your finger, put a drop of blood on the card, wait for it to dry, put it in the envelope, send it back. And we can find out not only do you have a sensitivity to wheat, because it will check that for you, 
but do you have elevated LPS and do you have a leaky gut? It's going to check all three of those things. It's so, I'm, I'm so excited about this because people who are feeling healthy right now, I got a little bit of a problem, not much, but a little bit, and yet they want to try keto. Those are the people, you do this test and you find out, oh, it came back positive. You don't do ketogenic right now. You clean it up. And how are you going to clean it up? We're going to take 250 people and we'll send them the tests. And those that come back positive, and I think about 25% of them will come back positive. Mm -hmm. First, I'm going to do a webinar for the 250 people when the test results come back. And because um, it looks at about 35 or 40 different markers. And I'm going to say, if this one's positive, this, what's, this is what it means. If this one's positive, this is what it means. If this one's positive, this is what it means. And I'm going to go through them all so people have a general understanding. And if they're positive for LPS or leaky gut, either one, then we're going to put them in a 90-day protocol and we're going to give them all the nutrition for free, over $600 in nutrition to do for 90 days. And as best you can, do this eating style. And we'll have videos and handouts and all that for them. And then recheck in 90 days to see have you successfully cleaned up this LPS in your bloodstream? And I think we're going to find a large percentage of people that have. And in that case, then great. Ketogenic diet, go for it. Now, you might want to check six months on a ketogenic diet for yourself. Mm -hmm. Has any of that LPS come back? Because you're doing elevated levels of lipid raft transcytosis, you know, coming right through. Has it come back or not? You, you, you can check. But... When you do this lifestyle change, this eating style, and you're taking this nutrition, it should clean it up. We think it will. And the nutrition company is really excited because they'll be able to show, we'll publish the paper, nobody's name, you know, of course, right. but just the information of 250 people, 75 were positive. And they went through the protocol and 64 of them were normal after three months. I mean, that would be such a win. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to publishing that so the whole world can see in the future. And you guys will be talking from a much more comprehensive perspective about the paleo world and when keto fits in and right. when it doesn't. Right. So that's, that's the goal. So what it's going to require of people, now the test is usually $449. For Just the test. the test itself. Just the test. Right. But I got the lab say, listen. I want to do this study and we'll, I, I will publish on it. It'll take eight months to a year to publish the paper and get it, you know, to submit it and get it published. I want to publish the study and I'm going to talk about your technology. So I want a discount here. So we got the test for 225 instead of 470, no, 449. Instead of 449, it's 225. And for the follow up test, I, for those people that need the follow up test, I asked the nutrition company to foot the bill for the follow-up test. And they said, well, we're giving all the nutrition. We'll, we'll pay for half of the test. So they'll pay for half of, of the 225 on the follow-up test. So for anyone that wants to do this to find out, do you have leaky gut? Do you have LPS infiltration, uh, endotoxin accumulation? And do you have a sensitivity to wheat? If you want to find out, the first test will be 225. That's on you. Mm -hmm. And the second test will be half of that, which is 11250. Right. So that's 33750 of and so that's uh, uh, $900 worth of tests plus $600 worth of nutrition, you know, $1500 worth of stuff for 300 and whatever that was, was that 327 or something? What, whatever the number was, I just added up. 300 and change. Does that, uh, let's see, I, I know there was a number of questions about cost. Did, did Dr. Tom answer? I, I think he did. Let me see, question, 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 question. Total cost, total cost. Um, does insurance cover that? That's probably not a question you know, Dr. Tom, but- uh, Really I'm, good question. Really good question, but at this point, no. Uh, because right. a finger prick test is just being approved by FDA, you know, they, they, um, this is new technology that's just come right. out. Uh, I suspect in the future it will be, 
Right. Uh, I suspect, but it's not yet. Right. Very, very good. Um, and what does a diet look like? I'm just, I'm very, very curious about uh, what the clean out process is like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it's so cool that this test for LPS and intestinal permeability includes the most comprehensive marker for a wheat related disorder. And as you know, that's my world and has been. Yep. They put this test together originally for wheat sensitivity with LPS and intestinal permeability, knowing that Pisano had said this um, nine years ago, that LPS and gluten disrupts the gut every single time. So if the LPS doesn't get grabbed by secretory IgA in the mouth and as it's coming down, get grabbed and escorted out in the stool, LPS can trick, can tear that lining and get in there. So they put that whole test together to include all of it. So you're going to find out with the most sensitive test in the world, and I lecture all over the world on this, there's no country that has a test that compares to this. It's called the wheat zoomer. Right. And when you look at this test and you see how comprehensive it is, there's nothing like it. So if we, you find out that you have a wheat related disorder, if your immune system's fighting wheat, obviously you have to stop putting wheat in or else you're gonna keep tearing the lining of the gut and the LPS is gonna get in and you, you, you won't be able to see success. So the eating style is wheat-free. I prefer dairy-free, but I've got no evidence to, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, to, to say that's a must. But with our patients, when we do wheat-free, dairy-free, and excess sugar-free, that means a paleo diet is perfect, right. you know, right. just perfect. And that's it. And then you take the nutrition a couple, three times a day, for 90 days, and we give you the recipes, you know, we'll give you handouts, um, how to have a gluten-free pantry and, and how to order in a restaurant and where are the hidden sources of gluten. I want people who found out that they're sensitive to have all the tools they need to be successful at this. And is there prebiotics, probiotics uh, included? Exactly in right, exactly. Now, the, the company that's really excited to do this is Microbiome Labs. So that means the mega spore products, the mega mucosa products, the mega prebiotics, which uh, I personally use in my own practice because they're so effective. I've seen them work so well. And another question I had was the secretory IgA. Would, would somebody be, or would someone have maybe a genetic uh, predisposition to not producing? the amount, you see where I'm going with this? Is this, yeah. um, or some other ailment that might affect IgA production? You bet, you bet. Very common to see uh, when uh, people who have recurrent immune problems, whatever they are, whether it's an autoimmune disease or they get recurrent ear infections or sinus infections or bladder infections, commonly they have low levels of secretory IgA meaning the immune system either genetically has, is not functioning very well because some genes are getting turned on, suppressing the production of secretory IgA, mm -hmm. and you have to turn those genes off so that you start making more, or they've just worn out their system. They had too many prescriptions for antibiotics early in life and uh, wore out their uh, ability to produce adequate amounts of secretory IgA, and then you have to rebuild them. Right, got it, got it. Uh, answering a quick question over here, uh, Stuart. Yes, this will uh, this will be on the Paleo FX site. Um, assuming we're still gonna, I'm not the Paleo FX, the Paleo FX Facebook site. Um, assuming Paleo FX remains on Facebook for, <laughs> for time. Well, hopefully, right. but uh, yes, for as long as we're still on Facebook, and we will uh, download this video too, just in case we have any issues with Facebook. Um, Dr. Tom, let's talk real quick because this is at the top of everybody's mind. And we will put links in here. Um, Mary Agnes and or Melissa, if you guys are on, if you could drop links, that would be great. If not, we will drop links um, after we wrap from this. We'll put those in the comments. Um, <clears throat> let's talk really quick about immunity because immunity is a, is a big, big issue. So I would hazard a guess that if somebody has an elevated LPS levels, their immunity is also gonna be compromised because the immune system is having to deal with this toxic overload. 
and it's just another stressor to the immune system. You know, I would much rather have elevated antibodies to my thyroid than elevated antibodies to LPS. Because yeah. if I have an autoimmune mechanism that I can recognize, I know have to, how to go after it. If you have elevated LPS an antibodies, they go everywhere. Right. They, uh, they're in your brain. They're in your kidneys. They're in your lungs. They're, they're all over which means any and every tissue of your body. I'm really excited about this study because these people are going to get a lot of my personal attention. You know, we're going to be doing lots of education and webinars for those that qualify for the study. And I think that'll be about 75 out of the 250 people. I don't really know. It might be more. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're. I'm just going to just have webinars every once in a while talking about some of this stuff and take a look at your life and um, clean your shower heads because shower heads just spray you with bacteria. Mm. If you've got biofilm in your shower heads, every time you get in the shower, you're getting sprayed with millions and millions of Klebsiella or Pseudomonas, and especially for those people that have recurrent head and neck problems or sinus problems or pink eye or ear infections. Uh, one of the places that people don't know to look is their shower. Mm. Right. Because, you know, there's bugs in the water, right? And they try to sterilize it, but there's always some bugs in the water, bacteria. And you, you take a shower, then you turn the water off. The water comes right up to the top of the pipe and sits there on the inside of the shower head. And the bacteria in that water start to produce a biofilm. It's like a polymer, a plastic mm -hmm. that protects the bacteria and they start reproducing. Then when you turn the shower on, the loose bacteria that's there gets washed in the shower and you get sprayed. And then the next time, you know, it just builds up and builds up and builds up. When just Google shower heads and bacteria in Hawaii and look at the studies of if you're in a warm climate. They compared Hawaii and Colorado and they showed how much of this cruds in the shower. Every shower head in right. Hawaii had it. And they change out the shower heads. In 30 days, it was back. They change out the shower heads in Colorado in a colder climate. It took a year and a half before it was back. So I teach people how to clean your shower heads regularly, right? So I'm going to do these kinds of little pearls with everybody in the study. Because I want these people to be, you know, I want this. I want you sitting on in your rocking chair on your porch in your 90s, you know, just rocking and saying, I'm really glad I did that study. Right that on. just changed everything, you know? That's what I want for everybody out there. And I, uh, just to answer some questions here, there's a number of questions of how do we sign up for the test? We will, for all of you, we will drop links here in the uh, in the discussion here. I also think that uh, Dr. Tom's team sent out an email today to the, uh, to the Paleo FX tribe. If not the Paleo FX tribe, the Keto FX tribe got that. Uh, but one way or the other, either through the email that was sent today or in the discussion here, we will drop links so you guys can um, can jump on that. And I would I, I would imagine the 250 slots is going to go away very, very quick. Because, I'm going to send an announcement out tomorrow to my entire tribe. Right. But, but I wanted to give the keto people and the paleo people the first shot because you guys are eating a lot of fat. Right. And there's no judgment in that, but you just right. need to know, make sure you don't have elevated LPS, because if you do, you're fueling the fire that's going to take you down two decades from now. Right. Or you know, Dr. sometime in the future. Right. And Dr. Tom, we talked about this in the Keto FX interview that we did that was fabulous, by the way. Um, we talked about how it's been a curiosity for so long that about 25 or 20 percent of people who you put on a keto diet for whatever reason don't respond well and that's always been a head scratcher before it's like what you know 80 percent of the people just seem to be fine but then there's that definite 20 percent that train wreck on it we either hormonally or something the wheels fall off and you can't really you don't have a reason why why did it happen i, you know, I don't know it just didn't work for you now i think we're getting closer to at least for those people who just immediately show a negative response. Now you talked about people who may have showed a positive response for years and then had a problem that was slowly, slowly building that they didn't recognize. But th these are the 20% that, that kind of went off the cliff right off the bat. 
So even imagine, even if you think, even if you've done the keto diet, even if you've done a high fat paleo diet for a long period of time and you are making improvements, it's still a good idea because you don't know how these levels are building up in your system. And I think that's exactly, the exactly right. Exactly right, Keith. That that is so important for everyone to understand. And high fat diets have lots of benefits. I am not dissing high fat diets. I am saying though, if you have accumulated endotoxin and you can't tell, you know, this kills more people than breast cancer, prostate cancer, and there was one other cancer put together every year. Mm. This kills more people. Endotoxin, the sepsis. Sepsis, sepsis is just accumulated LPS. And how does it accumulate? Little bit at a time, little bit at a time, little bit at a time, and it accumulates. And if you've already accumulated so much that your immune system is having a real hard time, but it's keeping it in check to some degree, now you throw in a larger volume of LPS coming in because you do a high fat diet and because of lipid raft transcytosis, more LPS is just sliding right through. That may take you over the edge and wherever this stuff has been accumulating, now you get those symptoms. And like, like, like you said, you fall on the rocks. One other thing that, that just entered my mind here, I know of people who for whatever reason, they don't know, they can't identify, they have an elevated homocysteine level, which would be indicative of some kind of an internal inflammation going on. Their diet's dialed in, their sleep is, di everything's dialed in, but the indications from their blood work is, is there some kind of an underlying infection maybe going on? You know, the thought is, well, maybe it's, you know, um, cavitations, maybe, you know, something somewhere is going on. Might that be elevated LPS levels? You know, Keith, it's really exciting to talk to a lay person who is sharper than most docs out there. <laughs> I, would not, I would not say that. I just, well, I, just well, I would, to, I would. I just happen to be in good company. So. That's a very sophisticated question. <laughs> and the answer is, there was this guy in the late 60s, early 70s, Dr. Kilmer McCulley, who was writing papers published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, New England Journal of Medicine. He was assistant professor of medicine at Harvard and said, we have to put the B vitamins in cereal because hundreds of thousands of people are dying from a B vitamin deficiency. And they said, what are you, a nutcase? No one was talking about nutrition in foods, mm -hmm. uh, enriching foods in the late 60s and early 70s. There was a lobbying effort to have him fired. Lobbying effort came from the cereal industry, obviously because of the money it would have cost him. Kilmer McCulley was fired from Harvard. And the only place he could get a job was a basement laboratory in a VA hospital in Maryland. So we went from the pillars of success professor of medicine at Harvard, to a basement lab in a VA hospital. But he kept doing his research, kept publishing his papers, which were jaw-dropping science. That, and they were so good, they were published in first-tier journals, British Medical Journal, Lancet, Journal of the American Medical Association, Cardiology. And now he's considered the godfather of homocysteine research, mm -hmm. right, because of that. When you read Dr. McCulley's papers, a primary contributor to the increase in homocysteine levels is endotoxin. That, that, that's LPS, mm -hmm. so you're absolutely right. Then you read his other papers that he writes about LDL cholesterol. Do you know what, L, why, why, do we, why does your liver make extra LDL cholesterol? It's not a freak of nature. The question is, why is your body doing this? And Dr. McCulley shows the science that LDL cholesterol binds to endotoxin. So if you have elevated endotoxin in your body and you're already making antibodies and you can't quite get this thing under control, a backup mechanism, now I'm suspecting that's the order. Dr. McCulley didn't write about that, antibodies first, then LDL. I'm suspecting it's the order. That's a backup system. All right, liver, I need some more LDL here to grab this crud that's in the bloodstream because you know the immune system isn't taking care of it well enough. There's too much. 
And so your LDL goes up to grab this stuff and escort it out. Endotoxin is a major, has been for many years, but there's no profit in it. Mm -hmm. There's no pharmaceutical to release endotoxin. So there, you know, there, there hasn't been an emphasis, but when you read the literature of how a quarter of a million people die every year from this, and that's end stage. This stuff's been accumulating for decades in their body. And eventually, they just can't handle it anymore. That's what we want to prevent for you 20, 30, 40 years from now, that you who are thinking about a keto diet, or if you're on a paleo diet, which is a high fat diet, right. you just check and make sure your LPS is not elevated. And it's really a simple test. Like Dr. Tom says, just a pin prick, send it in, bam. Very, very quick, accurate, 98% accurate. And, you know, if you're good to go, you're good to go. That's right. And you, and you go and you roll on and you, you know, do what you're doing. And if you're not, if you've you're not, got, you've got me and my team that are focused on this to give you the big picture. And here's the handouts. Here's the things to do. And here's the nutrition. Right. And we'll give it all to you for 90 days. And then you recheck. For 112 bucks, I think. Yeah, if it's two to 225, 112 50, you recheck and make sure that, all right, we've been successful at this. Right. Uh, Mary D., um, if we're already gluten free, will this test still work? Yes. I'm, I'm the answer for Dr. Tom. Yes, it absolutely will still work. Um, you still should check just to be on the safe side. I know I am. Um, May I comment on that? Sure, absolutely. I've only had two people come back negative who are gluten free in the last four years. Wow. Because a paper came out in March of last year from Peter Green at Columbia, one of the gurus in the world of celiac. He took um, 803 uh, uh, testers, gave them testing equipment, sent them out around the country into gluten free restaurants. And they ordered from the menu 5,624, I think it was, different items on gluten-free restaurants, in gluten-free restaurants. When the waiter or waitress left the table after taking the order, they pulled out their testing equipment, put it on the table. The waiter or waitress comes back with their order, and they're looking at this, and the people, the testers just take the substance, put it in the testing machine. What did they find out? 32% of everything in a gluten-free restaurant is not gluten-free. 54% of gluten-free pasta is not gluten-free. 52% of gluten-free pizza is not gluten-free. So for people who are gluten-free and feeling better, that's great. But if you're not feeling fabulous, what's the emergency break that's holding you back from feeling fabulous? Right. You know, if, if you back out of a driveway and you say, what's wrong with this car? It's not going very fast. Oh, the emergency brake. And you let it go and then you're back out fine, right? That's happening for most of our gluten-free people because they don't know because they feel so much better. But internally, your immune system is still fighting gluten. Right. And that's what you discover by doing this test. And if you've ever, A, worked in a kitchen, I only know this because Michelle was a chef. If you've ever been in a kitchen, worked in a kitchen, and seeing the potential for cross-contamination and how difficult that is to control in a restaurant situation, it, it, it's near impossible. And, and Michelle has also been in gluten-free certified kitchen situations that I can tell you <laughs> what they have to go through to prove that is yeah. gluten-free is it, here, it's tough. Here, here's, put it that here's, way. Here, here's something that happened last um uh, uh, October, uh, Marzi and I were at the Swiss mountain clinic, a place where we host people every year. We're there for a couple of weeks and people from all over the world come while we're there and they go through the detox programs of the clinic. And, uh, we sit at the table at every meal, you know, I'm there answering questions for them. I'm not making any recommendations, but they just down, I download and I just love to download, you know, it's my thing. And, uh, I brought the testing equipment that Peter Green used uh, in that study. I brought it to Swiss Mountain Clinic. And every day I checked every meal. And for 13 days, every meal was fine. On the 14th morning, breakfast, it came back positive. 
I said, honey, to my wife, said, it came back positive. It's like, what the? What, what's this? She immediately got up and went in the kitchen and said, what's in that oatmeal? And he said, oh, no, no, no. it came back positive for gluten. No, 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 Marzi. And because Marzi had been there the November before and converted their kitchen to completely gluten free. They didn't know, you know, but once they, sh I, and I showed them the studies and they said, oh my goodness, we didn't, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's an entirely gluten-free place now. And they've got a Michelin star chef that cooks every meal. I mean, it's unbelievable. But she went right back there and he said, no, no, no. Oh, and let, let's go see. Oh, the 50 pound or what, 25 pound bag of oats that had just been delivered was a different company. And it said gluten free on it, but obviously it wasn't, it was contaminated. Right. But this little equipment is called the NEMA equipment, picked it up uh, and, and identified it right away. So I'm telling everyone out there, you're doing your best to be gluten free, but when you do this test, you find out if you're successful or not. And if you're not, then you start investigating where is that coming from? Right. Dr. Tom. I really appreciate your time. I don't want to suck up. I don't want to take your whole afternoon. I know you've got uh, a beautiful Costa Rica day to, <laughs> to get out to down there, and I don't want to deny you that. Um, one other quick question. Would this program work for a person with a high amount of food sensitivities and allergies? I'm assuming, yes, it would. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I've, I've got a few minutes, Keith, if there are some oh, questions, sure. because this, this study is really important to sure. me. I think it's going to help hundreds of thousands of people once we publish the results. Because every doctor is going to go, oh, my God, I didn't know that. Right. I didn't know that 25% of everybody has elevated antibodies to LPS. I better check that more often. And then they'll start checking it. And when they do, they will, they'll see, oh, my gosh, I never thought to check that for that person. But mm -hmm. they'll find it. So I think that this, um, this is a way that the participants are actually contributing to the well-being of the planet. You know, while they're while they're finding out for themselves, can I start keto right now or not? Right. Or is paleo great for me right now? Or am I missing some link that I have to deal with to really make it healthier for me? <clears throat> so about the food sensitivity. Absolutely. Yes, this will be very helpful. Very, very helpful. I'll, I'll explain it this way. Mrs. Patient, your intestines are a tube. It starts at the mouth, goes to the other end. It's about 20, 25 feet long, kind of winds around there in, the, you know, in your gut. If you think of a donut, if you could stretch a donut out, one big, long donut, look down the donut, that's your digestive tract. Mm -hmm. So when you swallow food, it's in the tube. It's not in your body yet. It's in the tube, right? The food has to be broken down like a pair of scissors, snip, 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 breaking smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. The inside of the tube is lined with cheesecloth. So only really small molecules can get through the cheesecloth to get into the bloodstream. And that's why your intestines are so long is because it takes a whole lot longer to break down prime rib than it does a banana. Mm -hmm. And so the snip, 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 snip keeps going on until they're small enough, small until they're the size of an amino acid. And the amino acids go right through the cheesecloth into the bloodstream. Then your body uses all the vitamins and the minerals and things. But when you get tears in the cheesecloth, that's leaky gut. When you get tears in the cheesecloth, now bigger molecules can get through the tears in the cheesecloth before they've had the time to be broken down small enough. Those bigger molecules get through the tears. They're called macromolecules, big molecules. And they get in your bloodstream and your brain says, whoa, what is this? This is not raw material I can use to make new bone cells or brain cells. Immune system, you fight this. And your immune system makes antibodies to strawberries or to chicken or to celery or to tomatoes. It doesn't matter what the food is. It's the intestinal permeability, the leaky gut that, and these patients, they go, they get a 90 food blood test done, checking 90 foods, and they're sensitive to 30 foods. They say, oh my God, that's everything I eat. Well, of course it is, right? Because your immune system's trying to protect you. You got a leaky gut. Fix that and then wait six months and go back and check again. Now you're sensitive to two foods, maybe three. Excellent. Uh... Can this be done outside of the U.S.? For instance, if somebody lives in Canada. Yes. Um, the, the, let's see. 
the nutrition? Can the nutrition be sent to Canada? I believe so. But if you want to do this, register and put a note in there with it so that it's contingent on making sure that we can send you the nutrition in Canada. Okay. I, but I do believe uh, Microbiome Labs products, uh, Megaspore and things like that are in Canada. So that should not be a problem. Uh, let's see. Greg asks, uh, Greg, yes, we are looking, uh, we're still looking forward to July. Uh, we haven't been told uh, one way or the other by the city of Austin if, if you know, the dictates are, if we can do it, we will. We're just still waiting like everybody else in the nation, <laughs> kind of waiting on word to be able to do what we want to do. Um, Greg was wondering if there would be any backlog in the labs because of obviously the COVID thing going on right now. Do you see any problem in backlog and testing? And Really great question. And I asked that question. The lab can do 20,000 tests a day okay. because the technology is so different. This was so very cool. You know, I call it the 30-30. 30 years ago, it took a 30 by 30 room at MIT, floor to ceiling computers to generate the computing power of this phone, right? We never could have guessed 30 years ago, that I'd be holding something in my hand that if I go to an app and I poke on it, and within five seconds, I can tell you that the air particulate matter in Spiazzo, Italy right now is 11, and that's a good one. But Chicago's 46, and that's a medium high risk. You know, uh, uh, San Diego's 30, San Antonio's 71. Uh, that's a medium to high risk. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, who would have guessed that we would have an encyclopedia that we can carry in our pocket 30 right. years ago? We never would have guessed this. The same is true in laboratory medicine. And there's new technology out that Mayo Clinic refers to. They said, and this is a quote, the new era in laboratory medicine. And the sensitivity and specificity is right on the money every time. And there's never been lab tests like this. Most people don't know that your lab tests are wrong two to three out of 10 times. They're wrong. Right. But that's been the technology of the tests from the 1980s and the 1990s and into the early 2000s. But the new technology is right on the money every time. And they can do up to 20,000 blood tests, uh, uh, whether uh, a finger prick in one day. Um. Mary D asked, does the following link, uh, Mary D, I'm not sure what link you're looking at. I'm not sure, but she asked, does the link to the 225 Vibrant Wellness uh, Wheat Zoomer Finger Prick Test automatically include us in the case trial? I'm not exactly sure yes. that link. No. Is that right? Is that yeah, right? We, we put the link together, and I guess that my team sent it over to you guys, so it oh. might be posted somewhere. Okay. The answer is yes. It automatically puts you in for stage one where you know you, you we send you the finger prick test you, you poke your finger you put a drop of blood there maybe it's two drops i don't know read the directions and, right and then it dries you put it in the envelope you send it back i'm going to do a webinar for everyone this marker means this this marker means this this marker means this and if you have indicators of intestinal permeability or lps in the bloodstream there are four markers for intestinal permeability, uh, which includes the LPS, but so it's LPS plus three others. And if you have one of those four markers, you qualify for stage two of the test, which is let's heal the permeability. Right. Here's the nutrition, here's the diet. And for those people in stage one that had wheat problems, but they don't have intestinal permeability, then the introductory webinar that I do with this means this, and this means this, and this means, please take this test to your healthcare practitioner mm -hmm. and work on your wheat sensitivity. Or you, you can work with my team at consultations, mm -hmm. but it's outside the study. Got it. Right? So you'll find out where you are. Uh, so if you come back negative to intestinal permeability or LPS, you're good to go for keto or for paleo. Mm -hmm. uh, paleo. You're good to go. Uh, in this respect, there's no evidence of a reason not to do it. And if you do come back positive, you have a great resource. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think the best. That's, yeah. that's my goal. And in 90 days, I'm going to do my best to make sure that every single person responds really well. You know, and I'm supposed to say 
seven to eight will respond, two or three won't. And if they're compliant with the program, I hope every single person responds well. Awesome. Dr. Tom, again, thank you very much for coming on, taking time out of your day to do this. Um, folks who are um, on this discussion, number one, share this around to anybody who you think might be interested in it. Uh, please share it, put it out to anyone you like. Um, I will check and make sure all the appropriate links are in fact um, in this in this post. I'm not I'm not sure if they are right now. I, I, I can't see it from the dashboard I'm looking at, but uh, I or my team will jump on that immediately. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, Dr. Tom. Thank you, Keith. Thank you so very much for the opportunity. And thank you everyone for watching and hopefully see you uh, in the study. Yeah. Fabulous. And thank you very much for putting this together. I know it is hurting cats to try to put together something like this. So kudos to you personally, kudos to your team for doing this. I, I, I do. I know what it's like to put together something like this. So thank you very much for that. And again, thank you very much for taking time, first of all, for doing the Keto FX interview. It was fabulous. Um, the group loved that very much. And thank you for spending time and coming on with us today. Thanks, Keith. All right. All right, gang. I am out for today. Dr. Tom is out for today. Um, I'm going to go out and get a little sunshine and fresh air. And uh, I hope everybody else has the opportunity to do that as well. Dr. Tom, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. All right. All right, gang. We'll talk again soon.